Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video, we are going to discuss the anatomy of the inguinal canal and specifically its walls. So, in order to understand the inguinal canal, we should first know how it is formed. So, what happens is that during embryonal life, testes are formed in the abdomen, whereas their final destination is in the scrotum. So, they have to pass through the abdominal wall in order to reach the scrotum. So basically the path that the testes take through the abdominal wall in order to reach the scrotum is called the inguinal canal as it is present in the inguinal region. Therefore in order to understand the inguinal canal we should first know the layers of the abdominal wall in the inguinal region. So I have made all the layers. The innermost layer is the fascia transversalis which is the fascia of transversus abdominis muscle. Outer to it is the layer of transversus abdominis muscle and internal oblique. Their fibers originate from the inguinal ligament laterally. The origin of internal oblique being more medial compared to the transversus abdominis muscle. So in this small portion the muscle present is only the internal oblique while laterally both transversus abdominis and outer to it internal oblique are present. Their fibers arch around and insert on the inguinal ligament as a single tendon which is called conjoint tendon and these arching fibers are called the musculoaponeurotic fibers of the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle. Then the outermost layer is the external oblique aponeurosis. The muscle itself ends quite laterally and in the inguinal region only the external oblique aponeurosis is present. Now let's arrange all the three layers in the correct order. External oblique aponeurosis then the muscular layer and then the fascia transversalis. Now the testes and the spermatic cord have no need to pass through the abdominal wall diagonally. Rather, they will pass just straight out at the weakest point in the abdominal wall that is where there is a gap in the middle muscular layer below the arching fibers of the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle. So you can see that it has passed through the abdominal wall taking layers of the abdominal wall with it which form the covering of the spermatic cord. So this external oblique aponeurosis forms the external spermatic fascia and the transversalis fascia forms the internal spermatic fascia which we can see here covering the spermatic cord. And in between the external and internal spermatic fascia, there is a muscular layer called cremasteric muscle which is form formed by the fibers, muscle fibers from the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle. Now the opening formed here in the inner side is called the deep inguinal ring and it is the junction of the fascia transversalis and the internal spermatic fascia and on the outer side the opening through which this spermatic cord is coming out is called the superficial inguinal ring and it forms the junction of the external oblique aponeurosis and the external spermatic fascia. Now see this that this deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring are well aligned in front of one another. So this is the case in a baby. But what happens is that when the child grows, the layers of the abdominal wall slide past one another, inner layers moving more laterally compared to the outer layers which stay medially. So this results in the deep inguinal ring becoming lateral to the superficial inguinal ring and the canal becomes diagonal through the abdominal wall. So now I have fixed the layers together and now the spermatic cord is taking a diagonal route to travel into the scrotum through the inguinal canal. And this is our adult inguinal canal. And now we will see its boundaries. So basically inguinal canal is like a tunnel through which a vehicle is passing. So if we want to know what are the walls of our tunnel, we should see that what structure are present above the vehicle, below the vehicle and on its sides and we will know that what are the walls of the tunnel. So in our case, the inguinal canal is a tunnel and the spermatic cord is the vehicle. So in order to see the walls of the inguinal canal, we will see what structures are present above and below the spermatic cord and on its sides. 
So starting with the easy one, the structures above and below the spermatic cord. So this is the spermatic cord passing through the iguanal canal and what structure is present above the spermatic cord? These musculo aponeurotic fibers of the internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle. So they form the superior wall of the inguinal canal. Regarding the inferior wall, let's see what structure is present below this spermatic cord. And it's the inguinal ligament at which all the muscles are attached. So inguinal ligament forms the inferior wall of the inguinal canal. Now let's see a bit tricky one, the anterior and posterior walls. So as the inguinal canal is running diagonally through the abdominal wall and it has a long course, therefore the structures forming its anterior and posterior walls are a bit different in its medial and lateral portions. So we will see them one by one. So here is the spermatic cord passing through the inguinal canal. This is its lateral portion and this is its medial portion. Let's see the lateral portion first. So this is the lateral portion and this is the spermatic cord. So what is present in front of it? It is the internal oblique muscle because we know that in this portion, the muscle present is only the internal oblique, not the transversalis abdominis muscle. So the anterior wall is formed by the internal oblique muscle as well as the external oblique aponeurosis and the posterior to it is the fascia transversalis. So the posterior wall is formed by the fascia transversalis. Now let's see its medial region. So in the medial region, we can see that anterior to the spermatic cord is present this external oblique aponeurosis and posterior to it is present the conjoint tendon as well as the fascia transversalis. So anterior wall is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis and the posterior wall is formed by the conjoint tendon and the fascia transversalis. So basically the external oblique aponeurosis forms the anterior wall throughout and the fascia transversalis forms the posterior wall throughout and the only difference comes in this conjoint tendon. That is also the reason why it is said that that the anterior wall of the inguinal canal is stronger in the lateral portion while the posterior wall of the inguinal canal is stronger in the medial portion. So that's it. I hope you found it helpful.